Champaign County Agriculture Today with your host, Dennis Riggs. Hello and welcome to Champaign County Agriculture Today. My name is Dennis Riggs and I'm your host for the next few minutes as we talk about a very important issue for agriculture and for urban areas here in East Central Illinois. This is a topic that you may have never heard spoke about before and it's one that you don't really see very much of but has a major effect here in our Twin Cities. East Central Illinois and especially in our agricultural areas and that's drainage. Yes, when it rains, the water comes down, falls on our ground, falls on our sidewalks, falls on our roof, but then where does it go after that? This is a topic that a lot of people don't talk about, but we'll talk about it today here on East Central Illinois' uh, best program for agricultural information and that's Champaign County Agriculture Today. Have two excellent guests on our program today. We're going to start out, we have Don Pitts who is an agricultural engineer with the uh, NCR. RCS, I got to get the initials right. Don, we're going to start out and we're going to ask you, define for me what NRCS is and what your job is there. Uh, NRCS stands for the Natural Resources Conservation Service. And it's a department or agency of uh, the U.S. Department of Agriculture. And we work with landowners to conserve resources. Uh, in, the, in the past, our agency's name was Soil Conservation Service. So many people might know us from that. But we've expanded our uh, scope from soil to plants and water and wildlife. Very good. And air, actually, too. Thanks for being with us today. We also have a program, Mr. Tom Burns. Tom, uh, an Urbana resident, uh, lives here uh, close by. And Tom, uh, you've been involved in uh, drainage systems as an engineer for many years. Tell us about uh, your job, what you do. I'm an engineer and land surveyor here in East Central Illinois and have been working here for, well, it seems like 35 years now, it seems uh -huh. like, moving along. But uh, enjoyed that, dealing with uh, both agricultural drainage districts and individual residential areas and uh, municipalities here in central Illinois. Okay. Well, thanks for being with us today as well. Thank you. Today we have lots of pictures. We've got lots of things we're, we're going to be showing the folks, so uh, bear with me as we go through a lot of these pictures. We're going to start right off here with uh, picture number one, and this is kind of interesting because you could have taken this picture a hundred years ago in East Central Illinois, or you could have taken it just a few weeks ago, and this shows some waterlogged soils. Um, Don, when you see a picture like this, what does this bring to mind? Is this a, a big problem? Well, this is the history of this region before uh, Western Europeans came. Uh, the area was wet. Forty percent of our soils uh, uh, have a water table near or above the surface at some time during the year within Champaign County. That's kind of the history of when the, when the first settlers came to this that's area. When it rained, that's exactly what it looked like out there. Let's move on to slide number two, uh, which, of course, um, is a lot like slide number one in that we've got waterlogged areas. And basically, this is just from rainfall. This is water that came down from the top, not up from the bottom. Is that right, Don? In most cases. Uh -huh. uh, around uh, rivers, you could have uh, water coming up or water coming out from the river, but most of the time it's from rain at that point. Many times in East Central Illinois, and we're going to move ahead to slide number three, uh, people don't realize that there were really no natural lakes or very few natural streams in this area. Slide number three shows us a waterway. Is that a natural waterway or what would you call that, Don? Now that's straight, so it's not natural. That was uh, dug by, uh, by people. Very good. That, there were some ingenious people, I believe they were called the early farmers, decided this was an important thing to do. Tom, there must have been some good engineering that went on back there. Give us a little bit of the history behind why farmers dug these ditches to drain this soil. It was part of the result of this um, widespread flooding issues that Don has suggested that we need to address that. Uh, in the early years, there was virtually no sense system of drainage, no ditches, no systems like that. There were no waterways. There were a few natural swales or sloughs as they existed through that area. But in many respects, the initial outcome, as uh, he suggested from the folks that came across the big water to come and figure out, is there a way to live here? Uh, there wasn't any way to deal with it. And so many days and many years when that process was started, um, the land was so poor because you couldn't raise a crop on it. There was nothing there, and there would be areas of extensive flooding, and more extensively, that from an urbanized point of view, there was a tremendous health problem. We don't think about it today. Malaria was a big issue at the turn of the century, about 1900, and it was a very, very serious problem. 
Let's slip ahead, and I'm, this slide number four that we're going to show right now is interesting because we're going ahead a whole bunch and we're showing a finished tiling system. This is what people don't see when they go across East, East Central Illinois and see our farm fields out there. Tom, uh, from an engineer's uh, standpoint, give us a quick idea of what we're looking at there in this slide. It appears to be that there's a a widespread grid system to collect the water from the individual parcels of the land, then it collects it into major collectors and then back into the main ditch at the bottom of that system to uh, serve the drainage for that uh, soil. So this is really an intricate system of collection subsurface uh, of the water, draining it down uh, a level to an area where it can be taken away from the field to turn that field back into productive farmland, right? It's it's absolutely essential in order to have the good husbandry of that soil. Okay, that's exactly where I wanted to head because slide number five, the next one we're going to look at, you talked about the people coming from, from overseas. There's a reason they came here to the United States, uh, the, the land of plenty, the exciting, as uh, the area of, the, of prosperity. Looking at number five, uh, Don, tell us about this. This is this is some interesting colors there. Uh, what should we look, be looking at in this picture? Well, the green would be uh, prairie soils or, or grassland soils, and those are some of the most productive soils uh, in the world. And there's not a lot of it there. Well, yeah, and it's in certain areas. Uh, there's the pampas of Argentina. There's the Great Plains of uh, the United States, and then there's the Ukraine, and there's an area in China that is characterized by these soils. And uh, basically, it's because the grass leaves more carbon in the soil. Okay. Now, in Illinois, we have a little island that, that kind of comes back from the Great Plains. We're there. zooming in here to yeah. the United States and for a closer look. And you see the green area in Illinois and Iowa. And uh, that's, that, that's the legacy of the, of the prairie soils. But also, in Illinois, we have the combination of not only prairie grasses that grew here, but we also had uh, loss, loss, which was wind deposit soil, and those soil particles are very uniform, mm -hmm. so it gives a large water holding capacity. Ad additionally, it was wet, and the wet reduced the rate of organic matter decomposition, so we had initially very rich soils high in organic matter, and they're still that way. Let's zoom in one more time. Let's go to our slide number seven. That takes us into Illinois and take a look at the prime farmland by county. Wow, East Central Illinois looks pretty good there. And is that because of the same, uh, what we were talking about? Yes, it's very much. Uh, we have also lost on the west side of the state. Um, but I guess that uh, we have, um, uh, it's the legacy of being more wet here. And that's the, uh, the good part and the bad part. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there's, there's good news and bad news in that. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a little break right now. And when we come back, we're going to talk about this history of how farmers put together these drainage systems and, uh, and made them work even to, to today from many years ago. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with a more of a look in specific about drainage tiles here in East Central Illinois. Between 1881 and 1903, Champaign County laid 43,568,279 feet of drainage tile. Welcome back. We appreciate you tuning in and learning more about agriculture drainage and urban drainage here on our program of Champaign County Agriculture Today. We've got some great slides that shows the history of uh, drainage here, and I know I'm excited about it because I know it's so important. I hope our viewers have the same uh, feelings about it. We're going to go to slide number eight here, and this talks about drainage history in Illinois. Uh, Tom, have you got some, some history here you can lay on us what this picture is? That's a photograph of the Dipper Dredge Boat, which was... Uh, symptomatic of the drainage um, improvements construction here in Champaign County and East Central Illinois. Uh, those systems were constructed, uh, hauled in by, um, by train from some cases, and then by um, uh, sled, et cetera, to bring it in here. They constructed that in the top end of the ditch, built a little pond, and then started to dig their way down in the ditch. They basically made the ditch as they went. Absolutely. They floated along and they, they just were, now how do they know where to go? Well, usually, as a part of this photograph doesn't show very well, there was another um, 
barge that went behind this that was dragged along, and the engineers and the surveyors and all the folks, the designer people, they were involved in this team as, as well, uh, sometimes making decisions on the spot as they went along. I can imagine that would be very interesting. All right, that's the drainage systems that we can see. Let's now talk about the ones we can't see. Let's move to our next slide, slide number nine, and this is talking about subsurface drainage in Illinois. Uh, give us a little bit of idea what's going uh, Don, you, you tell us a little bit about what's going on in this well, slide here. Initially, they were put in by hand labor and with, uh, with the horse-drawn uh, implements, and uh, it was difficult. It was a tough task, but the uh, tile had to be put below the surface three to five feet in order to be able to collect that water and reduce the level of the water table, lower the water table. You can't see it in the slide here, but it talks about the 10 million acres of Illinois farmland were drained with subsurface drainage. Is it's what this slide shows. About what we have now. Okay, let's move on to slide number 10, and this shows us a very important piece of this puzzle. Uh, explain what what that is, Don. Those clay tile. Uh, that's an example of a clay tile. Were manufactured typically locally. And many of the towns had clay factory, clay tile factories, and uh, that was the common means of conveying water to ditches from um, the 1900, late uh, uh, 1890 to 1970s. Mm -hmm. And then we went to the next form, which you Well, well I'm gonna, before okay. we get okay. to that one, Tom has brought along some show and tell here from his office, <laughs> and I'm, I can't wait to, to look at these. Tom, uh, we've got some examples of clay tile here on the, on the counter. Uh, start from, from oldest to newest and tell us what you've got here. Well, it's hard to know exactly the age of those because they were undercovered as a part of a construction project. Most of these were handmade you can see they're not very straight, they're not very smooth, but they did the job done. Almost always had flat bottoms on them so that the fellow that made them set them down and they set, it there, set them there, allowed them to dry and to be used. But the, that's the process, different sizes, et cetera, and uh, in order to provide the drainage for the agricultural areas and in fact the urbanized areas as well. Many uh, home sites would have used this sort of thing to drain their land. Okay, so this was used for their subsurface. Is this, were, is this part of the bigger pipe or is this as, sh as long or short as they were? Uh, these were the size of the pipes, both the length and the sizes were different, but the, the issue, really issue, is the length of it because the water passed into the tile in the joints between this piece and the next. The water doesn't pass through the pipe itself, it's just in the, the gap between this one and the next piece that would have, not the same size, but obviously that area between, and then they'd put a covering on the top, usually a little piece of clay bat on top, or on occasion later on, they put a little felt paper over the top so that the water would come in mostly from the bottom and then flow through the tile. Very good. Now, why the different sizes? I mean, uh, water's pretty small. Uh, why would you have different size tile? Well, for the reason of the, the economy of the process. In other words, the small one drains into the next one, the next one drains into slightly larger, the larger goes even into bigger, and ultimately they drain into the drainage ditch, which is the outlet for the, the drainage for the farm or the home site. So eventually these tiles uh, that are doing the subsurface drainage would end up in an open ditch somewhere where they would then go into a ditch and, and go on downstream. Yes. In this case, they would have flown into the, the Salt Fork or the Vermilion River or wherever here in East Central Illinois. Very good. Now, Don has brought along a picture, and we're going to go to slide number 11 here next, and this is a clay tile factory. So these tiles did not, they weren't imported from Europe or anything. They were, a lot, a lot of them were made right around here. Is that right, Don? Right. Many, each, each county probably had more than one clay tile factory because it's heavy to move. Uh -huh. and, but they're pr produced on site and then hauled out well, to where they were installed. Produced in, a, in an area maybe mm -hmm. of 10, 10 miles radius and then there'd be another maybe clay fac uh, tile factory. Okay. Well, let's yeah. move on to, to slide number 12 here and it's called drainage impacts. Tell us a little bit. You brought this one along. What's going on there? Uh, I guess I brought it. I'm just trying to show the history of this is the drainage districts we're installing uh, larger a conveyance uh, pipe, and this was um, uh, connected from the farm to the to the drainage ditches. So what you're showing this here is the actual main process. Line uh -huh. Also on a farm, uh -huh. but the laterals that you first showed, uh, these are lateral lines, uh -huh. and they're typically spaced about 100 foot, and then they go into larger uh, pipe system. Uh, which are called sub-mains or mains, and they could be up to 18 or 24 inches in diameter. Very good, but quite a process there. We're seeing uh, a lot of people, a lot of activity in going Illinois, on. In Illinois, there's more than 200,000 miles of this type of tile lines but, below the surface. And nobody sees them. Nobody sees them. That's right. Well, I, we're going we're gonna to jump here for just a second. Tom, I know you do a lot of work both in urban drainage. Let's go to our slide number 12A, and this is a drainage system that we may not quite 
think of as a drainage system. Well, explain what's going on in this picture. I believe this is right here uh, in Urbana. This is in Urbana. That's uh, the drainage way that passes through on the Boneyard Creek through the uh, campus of the University of Illinois. Not only because of its educational value, but because it's an urbanized system and it's in town and this uh, system drains a, a significant amount of this watershed as it drains into this. A lot of the buildings of the university drain into the boneyard, which then drains into the Saline Branch, which drains into the Salt Fork and then to the Vermilion River and the Wabash, et cetera, so and how it works through. So it's just like agriculturally, the, the open waterway has to be in a lower spot because that's where Mother Nature wants it to be. That's where it's always been. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move ahead to our next slide, and this gives us a little bit more of an aerial shot, and although we think when you look at a picture like this we're looking at a pretty campus picture of the University of Illinois. Uh, Tom explain what's going on there uh, just in the shadows of the buildings I believe. Again it's the Boneyard Creek and the restoration of that stream uh, through by the University of Illinois has been an effective improvement for this community in order to address uh, drainage problems both on the campus and through the upstream parts of the city of Champaign. Um, traditionally, the campus had always flooded every two or three years at significant cost to the university. We've now brought that down to zero at the moment for the drainage improvements that are finishing with the city of Champaign upstream to the west and then as it drains farther east, passes through Urbana and on through the system. So, uh, so even though Mother Nature is in control, uh, we as engineers and soil scientists is kind of can work within some parameters and and uh, make it a little bit better. Absolutely, that's the the concern is to improve it to address those issues. Otherwise, you can uh, you can understand the damage that would happen to the basements of some of those buildings at the university. A lot of money gets wasted. Well, Don, you know, you guys must have job security because Don has brought along a picture, and I want to go to slide number 13 here, that says that this is not a new problem, it's actually an old problem we've been fighting for a long, long time. Slide number 13, explain what you've got here, Don. The drainage goes way back to Roman times. Uh, the Romans put in a lot of subsurface uh, drainage systems, and then in, in the uh, Babylonia, um, in what is now Iraq, uh, there was a system of uh, subsurface tile. And this is an example of some of the tile that have been, um, you know, unearthed in uh, the Middle East that are 2,000 years old. So even though this technology and this need is thousands of years old, uh, a lot has not changed, but there are a few things that have changed. Um, Tom, you brought some more show and tell. I'm, I'm going to ask you to, to, to grab what's that foreign piece of plastic that's here on the table. This is the current style of construction of those field tile. Normally they have, you can't see it very well, there are small holes between the ribs in the material and further because you can't see that as well, there's a, usually a fabric sock as we call it that goes over the top and that tries to prevent the soil from passing into the tile and sanding the, sending the soil into the tile as well. And so this is the new style. It's much more effective, quite frankly. I think it works better than the old way. And in fact, it's less costly. And come on big rolls and extension and the process. Let's bring that up. Slide number 14 here, because people may think that it's laid the same way end to end as the old tiles, but explain what's in the picture here, Tom. The, the photograph there indicates a, a roll of those. And you just unreal those, get kind of in reverse of how it's been stacked up. And it comes out into a field uh, in a piece of equipment uh, machinery and there you go there's the photograph and it's a very effective uh, very uh, less labor involved nowadays than it was when the guys have to dug this with a with a tile spade to install them by hand. <laughs> not nearly as much fun. <laughs> no, not as much fun. <laughs> well, let's move on to slide 16 then. Just bring that up. This gives you that detail that you were explaining about the slots and how the water actually gets into the tile. In this case, the water passes through the tile rather than the old style between the joints. In this case, it's all those little holes that uh, lay into the plastic pipe. Okay, let's take a look at our, our next photo. It's kind of the same as the, the one with the, the modern tile plow, but this shows, and, and maybe Don, you'd like to, exp uh, to tell us what's going on here. Why that, what's that curved thing in the back? What's going on? Well, they're, they're feeding the, the, the plastic tile in uh, to this uh, uh, plow or, or trencher. I'm not sure, I can't see from, from here. Mm -hmm. And it's being controlled by a laser so that the grade on that tile is very precise. You know, we don't want to have a reverse grade in the tile uh, in the drainage system, otherwise we'll have an accumulation of silt or sediment in there and block it. So, so it's important that it's very, uh, very 
precise to grade. So for all of the uh, the engineers in the world, you still can't get water to go uphill. Is no, that what you're telling not me? Not without a pump. Tom, I know Tom's <laughs> been working on that. We have to pump it though. <laughs> we'll tell you why. This whole drainage area is, is very interesting. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a short break right now. And when we come back, we're going to talk about what the benefits of drainage are and how it affects us not only in the agricultural areas, but also in our urban areas. We'll be right back. In 1876, there were 33 drainage tile factories in Illinois. By 1884, there were 526. Welcome back. Thank you for tuning in on this program for uh, drainage systems and how they affect us here in our area. Uh, before the break, we were talking about the different drainage tile systems. Okay, There must be an important reason why farmers and urban areas put these tiles in. Tom, as an engineer, why would somebody come to you and say, I need a tiling system? Let's first of all start about on the farm. Productivity for the yield of the farm itself, that if it were with uncontrolled or unconstructed or unaided, it's going to be a pretty, um, pretty poor farm. You're not going to do very well. The value in the farm, both in the dollar value that it's worth and the crops that can be generated, are going to be significantly depreciated if you don't have good drainage for it. And there's many, many studies to address that and the concern for the, the quality and the quantity of, of crops. Is every year the same? Do you, I mean, if you put it in a tiling system, will it, will it perform the same every year or is there a variable there? Well, it's dependent on the weather. We can't tell how much of value you got out of it. In many respects, uh, this year, there'll be a lot of folks been very happy about the tile systems that they put in, if they put it in ahead of time and have yielded. My family and our farm, we did that uh, four or five years ago, and boy, we're feeling really happy about it this year. It works out pretty good, huh? Yes. Well, Don, let's talk about uh, on the agricultural side from NRCS. Uh, if somebody comes to you and wants to know information about a tiling system, what benefits do you tell them it will provide for them? We don't, we don't design tile systems anymore, and we don't, we don't, we're not involved in the installation of tile systems anymore. We did that in the 70s and by the and before, but in the 80s, because of the wetland issue, we not, uh, we don't cost share on, on mm -hmm. tile installation. But uh, this is not is not needed because the yield monitors on combines <laughs> have shown uh, producers that tile pays. So what, what we're seeing is an increase in the intensity of tile. Not so much that there's more acres being drained with tile, but there's more, they're more intensely drained. In other words, instead of having a random system with a few tile uh, in an acre or in a, in a farm field, now we have tile spaced at, uh, in a, what's called a pattern grid every 100 feet. And this is becoming the more common way of draining farmland. Well, this seems like quite a, a process here to lay it out, the lasers, the tile. Contractors do that. Who pays for all this? The grower does. They, so it's not a not, it's not a government thing? No, no. Okay. We, we're not involved in paying for tile. There you go. Except when there's a clear conservation benefit, such as in a waterway or a terrace, where we have to uh, drain it to keep the grass cover. Okay. Tom, let's now switch over to the urban side of the equation. Uh, why does a town, whether it's a big uh, city, uh, Danville, Champaign-Urbana, or maybe a small town uh, out there in the rural areas, why is drainage important to them? Number one, I'd like to suggest because of the health of the citizens. We think this is a casual issue uh, today, but in the historic past, it certainly, we've, malaria was a big issue in this part of the world. Uh, the health and concern of that, the human damages of Flooding basements, I suspect that this year, which wasn't as wettest of the years we've had in the past, uh, I bet we've had a hundred storms, excuse me, a hundred basements of uh, people as a result of the storm. And that's a significant economic damage to the community for that. And secondarily, it uh, diminishes the opportunity to travel from one part of the community to another because it's flooded. You can't get through the, the viaduct in Urbana or wherever in order to um, continue that the, our business needs to keep going on. Now, the drainage systems in the farmland are paid for by the farmers, as Don was pointing out. What about in the urban areas? Who pays for that? Most of those are paid by the communities, of those by the landowners and the, the taxpayers, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, taxpayers in that res res respect are uh, a little bit different because the drainage district issue, most of those are based upon benefits rather than, than taxes on 
expected benefits from all of that. It's a little different, but much the same. Do you, uh, does someone complain about it in an urban area? Where, where does the ball get rolling? In other words, are there new drainage systems being put in now, or are we just maintaining ones that have been there for a long, long time? No, they're almost always required now in any of the municipalities, in the county, et cetera, both for the individual storm sewer systems and the stormwater detention or retention systems are also included as a part of the standards now. But all the communities that I can think of have an ordinance that requires that in order to manage that so that it does not damage the downstream landowner, the servient landowner. We just can't flood those folks out. We we can't do that anymore, and so we have to address those concerns. Even with all these drainage systems, every year in the springtime, we see the stories of the of the viaducts that are flooded or the farmland that's flooded. Uh, are we just not doing a good enough job on our drainage systems, or why do we still, uh, after major rains, can it, can it always be taken care of, or can we never take care of all the water at one time? We're always getting better. We're always better understanding what's going on and the potential impacts for that. There were serious concerns in the past here in Champaign-Urbana. They worked very hard in order to keep the, the uh, stormwater and the sanitary sewer separated and so that they don't get blended together and damaged from people. No, they work very hard. But it's uh, Mother Nature keeps putting more challenges for us each and every day. We work on it every time. Don, let's switch out to the agricultural areas. In NRCS, what new things are happening to control water, water runoff, and drainage systems on the farm? I guess uh, what I would say is maybe new on the horizon, uh, and we're seeing some implementation in East Central Illinois, is managing the drainage systems. Uh, hitherto four, it was just getting the water out. Uh, but there are times when by letting water go, that water could be used at later for, for meeting the crop water needs. So with a structure like this on your screen, I guess you have a picture the, of it, the last water level control at. structure, mm -hmm. uh, that the water can be then held in the field and, and, and managed. Uh, so as we become more intensive in, in, in the amount of tile that we have in the field, we have more options on how to manage it. In other words, it's not a free flow in all cases. So okay. we can manage it, hold that water back for the summertime for the crop water. Use. Let's, let's take a quick look at that picture. I think, Todd, you can maybe talk about that. Also, the drainage management. Uh, what do you see uh, as far as uh, engineering a system like this? It's particularly helpful to a farmer who understands this soil that's different than the others. Those that are very close a finely uh, grain soil might be one impact, but if you had a sandy soil farther north from here or farther west, uh, there's a significant difference in the opportunities for the yield and the management of that water and the utilization. What about in towns we see these ponds around, around maybe a new subdivision, maybe some uh, business areas, and we see these ponds now. Are those natural ponds? What, what are they placed there for? Those are all been constructed in order to manage the flow of water. It is much the same sort of system as indicated here. And on the other hand, it doesn't not quite as mechanical as the device he's shown on the slide there, mm -hmm. but nonetheless, those are all designed and included in order to manage the quantity and quality of the water. Very good. Well, I'll tell you what, gentlemen, we've covered a lot of ground, if you will, today, and we've, we appreciate it as we discuss the uh, drainage effects here in Champaign County. I want to thank you for that. Um, and that's about all the time we have for today. Uh, we appreciate you watching today. I'll say drainage is important. If it was not important, uh, we'd all be back in the swamps that the early settlers came to uh, hundreds of years ago and we'd be having those problems with malaria, as Tom talked about, and, and those other things as well. We hope you'll tune in again next time when we have a chance to tell you what's going on with Champaign County Agriculture Today. I'm Dennis Riggs. Thanks for listening. Champaign County Agriculture Today is brought to you by Champaign County Farm Bureau.